Hi, I'm Corrine, and today we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite wildflowers, which is edible, it's medicinal, it's easy to grow, it's gorgeous, and uh, we're going to share care of it and how to harvest it, uh, the recipes that are our favorite recipes for this plant, and it's going to be fun. So this is one of my favorite wildflowers. This is spiderwort. And this flower is one of the first ones to bloom in the spring. And it grows all over the US. It actually grows in a lot of different parts of the world at this point, all over Latin America, and it's been imported into Europe. So we started with just one plant here, and it turned into this whole beautiful meadow all on its own. And this plant can, uh, grow in sun or shade, it can grow in wet areas, even boggy areas, and we're on a sand hill which is very dry. It, it loves it here, it grows naturally here, and um, we happen to import this one, but we, we find them on the site just growing naturally. It's a wildflower, but it's also used as a, a great landscape plant because you can put it almost anywhere and it will survive and it will continue to flower. And if you cut it back once, once a flower passes and don't let it go to seed, then it will continue to flower pretty much until frost or you know, almost all year round. And then one great thing that I love about this plant is that it's both edible and medicinal. And uh, the whole plant is edible and you can um, eat the stem raw. It's kind of crunchy. You can put it in salads. You can cook it like uh, asparagus. A lot of people cook these stems just like an asparagus. It's a little fibrous, but I think it tastes delicious. The leaves are also edible, and the um, young ones are more tasty. They also go good in salad. And the flowers are also edible. And those are yummy. And they're, they're beautiful in salads. You really want to uh, make a, a pretty salad people are going to comment on. Put some of these flowers in there. They're pretty stunning. Um, now, here's a quality of this plant that I really like. Is it's got a, a healing sap in it that you can use just like you would use aloe vera. This is great on insect bites. It's great on, um, on uh, cuts. It's got a lot of healing qualities in it. It was used by the Cherokee and other Native Americans as, as a healing um, topical application. And it was also used as a tea. The leaves were used as tea. And they can also be uh, crushed. You can chew on them and use them as a poultice. Just crush them up. And they also had this mucilaginous kind of sap in them, which is really great. And you can really taste it when you eat it. It's, it's not, it doesn't, it's not unpleasant like some um, mucilaginous foods to me. And um, it's fibrous, which is really good for you. So this plant is a digestive aid. It soothes the whole digestive tract with these, uh, with this sap. And it again was used by Native Americans for that purpose. They also would uh, use the root as a laxative and uh, they would uh, make a tea out of it, which it also had other uh, medicinal properties for them. Uh, it handled women's issues and uh, pain, parasites. They use it for all different kinds of uh, medicinal uses. And um, the seeds, once this, ch once this plant flower, um, goes to seed, uh, you can roast the seeds. And I'm wondering if you can make flour out of them. That would be an interesting thing. I didn't read anything about it, but it would certainly be worth trying. So this is a, a really useful plant on many levels. The whole thing is edible and medicinal. Um, great pollinator. And it, there's one other more very unusual thing about these flowers. 
is these stamens here, these little hairy things coming out of the, past the petals, um, actually turn color in the face of radiation or pollution. Uh, they, they mutate and they're very sensitive to mutation, more so than a lot of things in that they show up in a different color almost uh, within a few days of being exposed to pollution. And that's really any type of pollution that will cause a mutation, that can cause a cellular mutation. This particular plant, um, when it mutates, it is unable to produce blue. And therefore you can see that there is pollution or some kind of toxicity in the system that's causing that. And there's several varieties of these. They're trying to breed pink ones and white ones, um, but uh, there's a, a wide variety of, of blue and dark blue colors, and that's just another feature of these. They do cross-pollinate if you bring more than one into the system, and you never know what you're going to what you're going to turn out with. And they're they're all beautiful. So I'm going to talk about how to propagate this plant a little bit. And there's three different ways you can do it. One is by just letting it go to seed, and these, these plants will uh, show up prolifically. All of these plants showed up on their own here. We started out with one, and that's all by seed. And then another way that you can do it is just breaking off one of these stems. And they break off really easily. And you can stick it into the ground and it will actually grow just from this stem. You just literally stick it into the ground, stick it several inches down, the deeper the better, and then just shove the soil up around it. And you have a new plant. It's gotta be watered, you gotta take care of it at first because the, the plant is um, creating roots and developing those roots and it needs a little support when you're doing that. The best way to do this is in a pot. I, I just tend to take these and stick them in pots like this and that's a really easy way to propagate it. And then the other way is to dig up this whole patch here and you can divide these roots just like lilies or a lot of any other kind of bulb. These divide in the same way. You dig up this whole patch and then split it up into three three stems each, and you get six or eight plants out of this little bunch here. And that's another way to do it. You could even just divide them one by one, but I tend to put two or three in there because they, they tend to survive better if you give them a, a good root mass. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about is one of our favorite recipes, and that is to take these flowers, pick a lot of these flowers, we have plenty of them right now, and we, we put them into a jar and we add honey and water and we let them ferment for, for three to five days and it becomes a, a wonderful, beautiful blue soda with healthy probiotics in it. And that's a, you can ferment the, the greens, you could ferment any aspect of this plant and get some really healthy probiotics. One thing I really love about at, uh, wild edibles is that generally they're really good at pulling nutrition from the soil. So you get, you know, kind of X factor enzymes and, and sometimes you get more concentrated nutrition in wild plants.